On today's show, Tesla owners in Australia get a little bit of a shock, maybe, and a solid breakthrough that is probably a very, very big deal. G'day everyone, my name is Chris and this is your show about everything happening in Australia and well from around the world in the space of electric vehicles, solar, batteries, wind and well more. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Consider subscribing, it really does help the channel. And if you want to go to the next level, join these awesome individuals over here on Patreon where you get exclusive behind the scenes content, early access, polls, news and well, stuff you just don't get here. And thanks to our sponsor, uh, Tesla Taxi Australia, where you can rent or hire out your Tesla in New South Wales, Queensland, ACT Victoria and South Australia. If you ever want to give Tesla a go, look these guys up. They've got great rates and using my code down below, you can save. Let's get into some news, shall we? Here's a nice turn of events. Batemans Bay, one of the many towns in Australia that was affected by the massive bushfires, is returning to somewhat normalcy, with more and more homes and businesses getting their power restored. And well, in a new addition to the town is Dan Murphy's. They're like a liquor merchant with many stores across Australia. And uh, well, recently they've opened the doors to one of its more energy efficient stores, complete with electric car charging. Dan's, as we affectionately call them in Australia, is focused on opening and redeveloping stores with not only like energy efficient devices like LED lighting, but also in this store's instance, a 53 kilowatt solar system to provide up to 35% of the store's power needs. In addition to this, the store also has a tritium charging system installed by Jet Charge, which can actually charge an electric vehicle battery to 80% in about, well, 30 minutes or so. Solar power is becoming a popular feature of Dan Murphy stores, with 16 of them in the network now using solar, and that figures to rise to like 35 under the Endeavour Drinks umbrella. Watch this space. All right, time for one of my favorite segments, and it's mail time. And last week, I answered some viewer questions around the Tesla ventilator and had Nash from Tesla and the Gong um, on the channel to help with this excellent schematic diagram that Tesla had detailed. So today, let's kick off with a few viewer comments around that. Dr. Ted3 wrote, since Elon was giving design information by Medtronic in order to build the ventilator, I would be surprised if we were to pursue selling ventilators long-term to compete with Medtronic. Fair point. And for anyone in business, keeping trust with fellow businesses is key to success. So I reckon you're right about that. That said, Medtronic did actually make available technical information for companies to use um, to build ventilators. But that said, the Tesla video definitely did mention how they're working directly with Medtronic. There are more comments like, Tesla Medical, maybe Musk would just spin off the team like the Boring Company. Why not? He has many businesses under his belt. And there's more. Could you tag Elon Musk on Twitter about Ghanaian's need for ventilators? Over 30 million people with less than 100 functional ventilators. After fact checking, I indeed did that and uh, my goodness, I hope hopefully things don't get out of control over there and all the best to you. And finally, others suggested that, well, Tesla maybe won't even make a ventilator or perhaps there'll be bureaucratic red tape that will see this delayed by up to a year. And look, indeed, this could happen, but perhaps with the extraordinary times that we're living in at present, the FDA could um, improve ventilators uh, in a much faster process. We'll wait and see. On the same show, I talked about studies showing a potential link between a, the death rate from COVID-19 and air pollution. And well, Ken Wickland wrote this. We do not need more studies to know that pollution from fossil fuels is a major problem on this planet. We, the people, have to insist on change right away, not more studies still a decade from now when it will be too late for us on this planet. Thanks for that and agreed. I think that uh, action is absolutely needed and hopefully, you know, we're all doing our bit to improve the air quality that we can. Um, this show, my house, everything that I can, I um, run on renewable power. So um, yeah, please um, do what you can. Lobby your politicians because they're the ones who actually um, need to make the legislation to make our air clean. And uh, yeah, watch this space. One final note for mail, and that's where I asked viewers to summarize price rises to uh, Tesla Australia's uh, recent price hikes. And um, Rosedale 79 got his or her comment pinned because, well, they responded by actually looking into that. So thanks very much. Great work. Really appreciate it. And lastly, the poll that I had was a pretty easy one, I think. So 100% and 100 internet points for everyone for getting that right. All right, let's move into some bites. People who have Tesla Powerwalls and a Tesla can in America at present, Australia to be announced, when Tesla, when? 
Well, they can now coordinate charging of their car during a power outage. Found on these software versions below, those with a Model 3 or Y, or owners with an S or X uh, sometime in the near future, can set up the power wall to power the needs of your home and will either slow or stop vehicle charging, keeping home loads, you know, power in consideration. Simply put, in the Powerwall app, you dial in a cutoff limit of how much battery you want to keep available to run your house. And that when a blackout occurs, the Powerwall, along with the Model 3 or Y, will then either continue charging normally if the house is using minimal power and there's plenty of charge available, or if your house is drawing a lot of power, it will slow the car uh, charging of the car down. Of course, if you reach that threshold, the car will stop charging altogether. Very impressive. Okay, what do you see? A Mercedes-Benz Sprinter? Maybe? Well, actually, you'll be wrong. And, well, kind of right. You see, this is the Dongfeng's E711. That's a Chinese-made electric commercial van that will soon, July maybe, be on our roads in Australia undergoing testing. Powered by a 72 kilowatt hour battery, the EC11 can travel about 200 to 250 kilometers on one charge and be refilled at a maximum rate of 60 kilowatts using a CCS2 charger. Available in three different seating configurations, the EC11 has 12.3 cubic meters of load volume, can carry up to 14 passengers or 1400 kilograms load capacity. Release and pricing are not yet known for Australia. Hydrogen. Will it be our future fuel? If you ask me, no. Maybe industry, but cars, definitely not. Especially with current battery tech demonstrating that, well, the weekend isn't ruined, and with solid state batteries perhaps around the corner, promising three times the distance with inexpensive metals. And well, even more reasons over here. Anyhow, that hasn't stopped researchers in America from developing like a sponge-like method of storing hydrogen at lower pressure and more cost. Made up of billions of tiny pores, a single gram of the new aluminium-based material has a surface area the size of a football pitch. The author says that it can store large volume of gas needed for practical travel without needing expensive tanks. Scientists at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory have created a solar panel that converts sunlight into usable electricity at an efficiency rate of 47.1%. For comparison, solar panels installed on most people's homes run to between like 15 to 23%. This result was achieved using a new design termed a six junction solar cell, whereby they layer 140 layers of semiconductor material. Also, they use like mirrors to concentrate sunlight onto the panels. Now, obviously, this is something that everyday homeowners like you and me can't do, but without using them, they're actually able to achieve an efficiency rating of 39.2%. Cars Guide learned this last weekend that Nissan Australia is preparing to launch the Nissan Leaf E+. That's like the 62 kilowatt hour version with a range of 385 kilometers on the WLTP cycle compared to the current 270 kilometers. Again, this is claim range. Now, Nissan's managing director, Stephen Lester, said that we don't have a date yet, but we look forward to giving the Leaf more visibility soon. And that's where you've got to do like an awkward wink, like soon, who knows? Okay, one last bite, and now this one comes from Twitter, where Daniel Kerchek, I think that's how you say it, CEO of Byton, they're like a Chinese electric car startup, they tweeted that it started producing the M-Byte, that's like a premium sports utility electric vehicle, which Byton has said will come to Australia in 2021. But following the recent announcement about the car's rollout in Europe, looks more like 2022 now, as well, the UK has actually slipped off the original announcement. Owners of Tesla in Australia learned this last week that premium connectivity package for the cars will be moving from the free feature to, well, a subscription-based model after one year of ownership. Priced at $16.99 per month, or like $10.77 in US dollars, the premium connectivity package continues things that owners are used to, like music and video streaming services, web browser connectivity, and so forth. Twitter user Australian Tesla owners felt that this was too expensive, to which Elon replied, well, he'll fix it meaning it might become cheaper, I guess. That's gonna be pretty impressive as well in Australia. Our data-only SIM plans start at like $15 per month and will quickly go up from there. Especially like on Helstra, I mean Telstra, <laughs> that charge these absorbent rates. But I'm also surprised that this package is pretty much actually in line with what the Americans are having to pay anyway. So I'll be curious to see if it does get cheaper. 
Okay, one last thought before I go, and I'd like to hear from you, and that is around about how we measure electric vehicle efficiency. Now, as pointed out to me in a recent uh, episode on Fully Charged, Robert Luan actually pointed out, and I think quite rightly, that you intermixing either watt hours per kilometer or uh, miles per gallon equivalent is kind of not a good way to actually talk about how we express efficiency for electric vehicles. After all, we're used to actually talking about um, battery capacity in electric vehicles in terms of energy. So, you know, uh, we'll talk about a, um, a Model S. It used to be a 75D in, in reference to the, like a 75 kilowatt hour battery pack. Not that actually that much, actually a bit more, a bit less, who knows. And well, Tesla recently has started hiding them and don't actually tell you what the battery pack is. But nonetheless, people tend to actually know, just unofficially perhaps, what the actual capacity of their battery is. Why not then we actually talk about efficiency in terms of kilowatt hours per, let's say, 100 kilometers. So shoot me some thoughts down below. I really don't want to hear from you. And next week, I'll do a dedicated segment to this on the show. And we'll vote up here. How should we measure it? I'll give you three options, okay? Watt hour per kilometer, kilowatt uh, per 100 kilometers, and miles per gallon. And I think this is an opportunity in the world right now where electric vehicles are becoming more mainstream and will continue to do so. And uh, we can actually get a common metric so that when I'm talking about a car um, in Australia or in America or wherever it might be, we're all using the same lingo. Yeah, that'd be great, wouldn't it? It really would. Okay, well, that will wrap it up for today. Again, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. I sincerely do hope you're very well and staying safe and doing all those right things like washing hands, washing hands, yeah? Social distancing, great. Um, if you haven't already, smash that subscribe button, hit the like, leave me a comment, all that sort of jazz. Join us over here on Patreon. And otherwise, you know what you can do? You be good and you be green.